Good afternoon. This is Pamela, and you are listening to Watchmen on the Pod. I am going to start a new book tonight. This book is entitled, It's a Matter of Life or Death. Wrong Thinking About Marriage Leads to Destruction. And this is by Judith A. Brombaugh. Introduction. In these last days, we must have the truth of God's word in every area of our lives. A true Christian can never consider divorce and remarriage outside of death. But does the church know the scriptures relating to this? This book is based and written only on the truth of God's word and not man's feelings. Teaching a class of young adults, they have desired only God's best for their lives. This book has erased much a man's false teaching and brought them into a deeper understanding of the scriptures for their future marriages and families. That was written by Andrew and Grace Jorgensen, Ministry to Families, Otto, North Carolina. And then, if experience is the best teacher then the author of this book is highly qualified to write on the wickedness of our present judicial system that is programmed to destroy homes and not save them, and on the heartache of having one's family and home ripped away while you do everything you can to prevent it. To find a clear resolution to this chaos from God's word, study this text. It has the answer every Christian must hear. And that was written by Pastor Joseph Webb, Calvary Baptist Church, Lake Mary, Florida. And I just want to remind you that he and his wife, Patricia, were the ones that had wrote um, The Trojan Horse about divorce and remarriage that I had read earlier. Forward. <clears throat> Why is it that we tell small children, don't run out into the street? Don't put things into the electrical socket. Don't pull the pot of hot boiling water over on you. Isn't it because we love them? Oftentimes, it takes physical restraint to keep children from doing things that will harm or even kill them. Some children respond in, that, in obedience to what they are told immediately. Others rebel, throw temper tantrums, or get angry at their moms and dads. Parents who give in to this type of behavior from their children usually find that these individuals, as adults, are still rebelling against peers, employers, or a mate. A father and mother may even see a child's life lost in a tragic accident stemming from not following the guidelines or precepts issued by the parents. We don't normally say to children, if you feel like that's what you want to do, go ahead. I love you too much to tell you not to run out into the street. We know that love involves doing something. It is training children so that they will be aware of harmful acts, which, if pursued, would bring permanent damage. In the primary years, children do not understand, so as parents, we use other methods to convince our offspring that they should obey. Adults, too, can do things which will harm them. We have seen the statistics on the deaths caused by drunk drivers. Our legislative system has passed laws which make it illegal for people who have been drinking to drive. Likewise, laws have been passed which make it illegal for people to murder and to steal. Does this mean that people no longer do these things? Of course not. Why then have these laws if people continue to commit such acts? We hope that with the governmental regulations, a large percentage of the people will be detoured from such behavior because they know that the wages of their transgressions could mean imprisonment or even death. The message of this book is a message of love. It is a message for adults. Like our children, whom we tell not to run into the street because we know that they will most likely be killed if they do so, or that they will be scalded if they pull a pan of hot boiling water over on them, or that they will be electrocuted if they stick a sharp object into a light fixture. Adults have rules, guidelines, laws, and principles, which, if not followed, will lead to unpleasant results. The younger children are 
the less likely it is that they will understand why you won't allow them to do what they want to do. Many times it even takes physical restraint to keep them from doing what you know will harm them. Adults are much the same except at a different level. There are rebellious lifestyles which adults can choose. Some, like children, may not always understand the ramifications of their actions. Others know and will still persist in wrong behavior. Unfortunately, until adults are placed in some type of correctional institution or until their lives end, the rejection of what is right is often not immediately dealt with. Consequently, they interpret what is wrong as being right. A book was written many years ago summarizing in human terms the love of one person, God. In this book, he teaches by parables, by examples, by sermons, through prophets, teachers, and everyday people like you and me, and by the personal sacrifice of his only Son, Jesus Christ. The crucifixion of God's Son shows the depth of his love for us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just as each individual is valuable to God, marriage and families are also important to him. The Lord instituted marriage and recorded this act in the book of Genesis. He has sent centuries, he has spent centuries telling and showing people the true meaning of love worked out in a marriage relationship. He also shows us the repercussions if we violate that relationship. How does he do this? Because we are, no, why does he do this? Because we are his children. And like a loving parent, he does not want us to be destroyed, to suffer hardship, or to bring harm to others. He doesn't tell us these things because he wants to be unkind. But like the parents of children, he desires to show his love for us. Many of today's churches do not teach the biblical message regarding the permanence of the marriage covenant and vows. They avoid many of the painful areas related to the breakup of the family. Even though it was created because one or both spouses determined by a free will choice stop loving his or her mate. Friends of divorced spouses evade talking about the commitment that was made on the wedding day. Why? Their response is often because they say they love people too much to be condemning, legalistic, or to put on their friends what doesn't seem like what God would expect. Some spouses involved in the breakup of their families respond that they have a right to change their minds, that God would want them to be happy. In studying the scriptures, however, God repeatedly tells people what they do not want to hear and informs them what would happen if they break his commandments, laws, precepts, or statutes. The purpose of this book is to relate episodes from the lives of people who lived in both the New and Old Testament times to show from the Bible how God defines love as it is related to marriage and the wages involved in not keeping the covenant and vows related to this holy sacrament. Judith A. Brombaugh, B.A. Adrian College, M.H.E. University of Georgia. And this book is a copyright of 1988. That was the introduction. Um, there's two things I would like to, uh, I guess, confirm on what she was saying. One, when I was a little girl, I would follow my daddy around everywhere. I was just very little. And I was told, don't you touch that cord, don't you touch that cord. Well, I touched the cord. And boiling hot coffee was poured on me from the top of my head to the very soles of my feet. And my Aunt Hazel had me in her arms running me out to the road, trying to flag people down in order to get me to the hospital as soon as possible. 
Second time in my life, I had a daughter. Her name was Savannah Rose. She went into the road, stepped behind a truck, and that truck ran her over and killed her. Now, if Savannah had been taught, she was two and a half going on three, if she would have been taught the proper way and had listened and knew, you don't go near the road, Savannah, you don't. But because I wasn't consistent and persistent, that went through one ear and out the other. And that day, June 2nd, 1996, my daughter died. So when she speaks about when you teach and you, and you discipline your children, you do it out of love because you know that they could be harmed or worse, they could die. God is doing the same thing with his children today. And he's telling us and he's warning us through these men and women that he has opened the scriptures to. Don't do this. If you do this, you will die, and you will be away from me for eternity. He doesn't want that for any of us, but he will not force us to obey him, but he will continually put it before our eyes and put it before our ears to where we will have no excuse when we stand before him on the day of judgment. So, as I read this, I want you to understand this lady that has wrote this did it through the Holy Spirit out of love. And I'm sharing this with you out of love. It is not to condemn. It is not to make anyone ashamed. It is so you can know the love of God and what God says is dangerous and to avoid at all costs. I would do anything to be able to go back June 2nd, 1996, and to pull my daughter out of harm's way. But I cannot turn back time. But if I see any of my brothers and sisters in Christ walking down the road in harm's way, it is my duty out of love for them to try and pull them out of harm's way. So I'm going to leave that there and begin with chapter 1 next time. I love you all so very, very much. Always and forever, make sure you keep your eyes on Jesus, your nose in the book, which is the Word of God, and embed the Word of God upon the tablets of your hearts so you will not sin against God. I love you all. You have a great day. Bye-bye.